All right, so today we're going to lecture for a little bit on the oligative properties. So I'm going to introduce uh, boiling point elevation and freezing point compression. And then today and tomorrow we'll do a lab on each one of those. So today is the spaghetti lab. We're not going to make spaghetti though, but it, it's going to be... It's going to be why why you add salt to water when you bake your noodle or when you uh, cook your noodles. Uh, adding the salt raises the boiling point of the water, and so your noodles cook faster, and you get a little bit of salt, and it flavors it. Okay. Tomorrow we'll be uh, doing a lab on freezing point depression, and that's how you make ice cream. You add salt to ice, and the solution that is made is colder than the ice, okay? So um, today what we're going to do is um, look at what kind of variables do we need to account for. So we're going to have new things, uh, molality, not molarity, not moles, but it's called molality. We're going to have to know how to find that. And then something called the Vont Hoff factor, okay? And that one's easy enough. Um, we just take it and assault and we unpack it, and the number of ions that it forms is this factor, this von Hoff factor. All right. So, colligative properties, colligative properties depend only on the number of solute particles present, not the type of substance. Okay, so this is uh, an important uh, fact or thing here. So changes in colligative properties only depend or depend on the number of salt particles, not on the identity of the salt. Okay, so it doesn't matter. That's the lab. I'm just doing notes right now. So we are supposed to be writing our notebook. Yep. Okay. So. Uh, only on the number of particles. This ends up being this von Hoff factor that we're going to get to in a moment here. And the name makes it sound tougher than it is. Okay? So among different types of colligative properties are things like vapor pressure lowering, boiling point elevation, melting point, or we're going to call this freezing point depression. And osmotic pressure. For us, we're only going to focus on these two boiling point elevation and freezing point depression. Okay? So, that initially give us some time for this first slide. Uh, Number of. Yeah. Solid. 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 Yep, solute is like the salt. So, you have solute, solvent. Are here from a week ago or two weeks ago. So I'll use the thing being dissolved, so that makes it the salt. Solvent is the thing doing the dissolving, which is water. Okay, so what we're doing is by adding salt or some other substance, so we could also add sugar or things like that, to water, we can change the physical properties about that substance. That's what this is all about, is how, to, how is, to what degree is adding um, this salt to water going to raise the boiling point or lower the freezing point, okay? That's what we're finding. And so this is this, this is just a phase diagram. So like at this temperature and this pressure, this is what the state of matter of the water would be in. Okay? So solid, so ice, water, and water vapor. Okay? What we're finding here, so if we blow this up, this says delta Df and delta Pv. What this shows here is the change in the temp in the boiling point uh, of the water. Okay. 
And this is the change in the freezing point of water. So what you what we're going to calculate what we're going to calculate is if we add uh, this substance to this amount of this substance to this amount of water, this is how much it's going to change its freezing point. This is how much it's going to lower its freezing point by. Or if we add this amount of this salt to this mass of water, this is how much it's going to change its boiling point by. Okay, that's what we're doing. So we have uh, essentially one equation. It's just what's, what are we talking about here? So freezing point depression and boiling point elevation, they're written in the same format. They're just, um, we use different symbols because we're talking about different processes. So let's focus on, since today we're doing boiling point elevation, I'll write it down here. It's too small to read back there. Thank you. Thank you. So boiling point elevation. So by how many degrees are we elevating or raising the um, boiling point is going to be equal to I times some constant. K is a constant times lowercase m. What do all these symbols mean? So this is the change in the boiling point, change in temperature. I is the number of particles that a substance will dissolve in. AB is always 0 0.512. And this M here, lowercase m, is called molality. And molality is equal to the moles of the solute, so the thing that's being dissolved, divided by the mass of the water in kilograms. Or we say kilograms of solvent, but we're only going to be working with water, so we'll try to make it simpler. We just say kilograms of water. How do you memorize all this stuff? Like you just know everything? No, I don't. Yeah. Okay, so let's first talk about this. How do we figure out the number of particles? Okay, so this is called the von Hoff factor. It's more comp. It sounds more complicated than what it actually is. So what the von Hoff factor is just measures the number of particles that a substance dissolves in. Okay. So we have two different types of particles. Okay? We have electrolytes. I'm going to pop back here. So if you titled it von Hoff factor, that's good. I'm just going to pop back here to you can have this under von Hoff factor. We have electrolytes versus non-electrolytes. We've heard of this word before. I spelled it Electrolytes. L-Y-T-E-S. Is that like what it has? Yep, exactly. So electro, T R O. L Y T E S. Okay. So electrolytes form ions when they dissolve in water. Non electrolytes. Do not form ions 
Okay. So, how do we know what things are going to form ions in solution and what things are not? So, all ionic compounds are going to be electrolytes. Essentially, they dissolve in water. For an ionic compound, we needed to have what types of elements? We needed a blank and a blank. Metal. Yep. Metal. Metal and non-metal. Non-electrolytes are probably going to be made out of non-metals only. So this would be like sugar. We know sugar dissolves in water for sure. Think of all the. So Gatorade has some metal in it. Yeah, metal ions, just like water does too. No. Why do people always say like, "Oh, Gatorade has electrolytes"? Are there other stuff that has that, or is it just like Gatorade? A lot of things have electrolytes. Beach water has electrolytes. Yeah. Uh, Gatorade has sugar to help your body. You, when you're exercising, immediately your first thing your body uses is the available sugar in your blood. Uses that up, and then once all that sugar is gone, your liver starts breaking down fats and turning your uh, this is called brown fat, turning brown fat, which is not your belly fat. Takes longer to make this into sugar. Uh, turns brown fat into sugar and dumps that into your blood as you need it. So that's why exercising your <coughs> calories, you first have to use up your blood sugar, then your liver, and then your body starts breaking down fats. Brown fat breaks down faster than like daddy fat. And so um, when does it use up carbs? Those are, the carbs are the sugar in the blood. Okay. So, um, so anyways, so Gatorade is designed to, you worked out hard, so now you, you're going to replenish your blood sugar so you don't feel tired. And your body doesn't have to keep working at giving you energy. Uh, but then it has the specific um, electrolytes that your body would have used a lot of and lost in sweat and stuff like that, like sodium and chlorine, stuff like that. So. Okay. So Gatorade would have specific electrolytes, but you could drink like all juices and. Does water have electrolytes? Yep. Yeah, drink especially tap water, not hurt. Um, yes, especially tap water and especially well water. Okay, so ionic compounds and then um, non-metals. Okay, so when so I, we're dissolving stuff, right? When we're doing boiling point elevation or freezing point depression, we're adding a salt to like a liquid or it will make it into a liquid. Like when we put salt into ice, it'll melt that ice, but it makes it really cold, colder than freezing, normal freezing point ice. And when we dissolve salt in water, we're dissolving that, okay? And when we dissolve salt in water, it goes from one mole to two moles of particles. You see that? Okay, so like one part or one mole of particles to two moles of particles. So we would say that this has a bot half factor, so I equals two, okay? Because it goes from one to two. It ends up with uh, two particles. When we look at sugar, so sugar doesn't, is, all, is made out of all non-metals, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. It can, it does dissolve in water for sure, but it doesn't like ionize. It just stays sugar and it's surrounded by a shell of water molecules and there we go, okay? And so since sugar essentially go, goes from, or does not change, what do you think its bot half factor is? Zero. One, it goes one. So it's however many particles it is when it's dissolved in the solvent or dissolved in the water. Let's try another one. Let's do AlCl3. That's going to dissolve into one aluminum and three chloride ions. What's the Bonhoeff factor for that? Four. Four. Ooh, three yes. plus one is four. Four ions. So I equals four. Making 
Making sense? Why is the three plus sure. on the aluminum? Charge of aluminum is three plus. Oh. Back roll. Give me some affirmation, or do you want me to do another example? Do another example. Another example. Another example. Question. Yep. So the three comes from because it's like a three scale. It's not like the charge from aluminum is three. That doesn't matter, right? No. It it comes from one, two, three, four. Okay. Yep. So four particles. When you dissolve, when when I take solid aluminum chloride and I put it in water, the solvent. It will separate into four ions. Therefore, I equals four. Yes. Okay. Last example here. Okay. 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 Here we go. Turn it up. I'm not going to find write the final result until you guys give me an answer. How many back row? Doing this for you guys. How many, what's the uh, what's the bond off factor for this going to be? Five. Yes, you guys got it. Awesome. Kendall's got it. Yep, so you get two of these and three of these. Right? Two and three is five. So, the greater this bond off factor, we look at our equation here. The greater the I is, the greater the effect it's going to have on the, it's going to change the temperature more. So that's, if we go back and read this statement, we probably didn't really know what it meant uh, at first, but now maybe it makes more sense. Changes in the colligative properties, raising the boiling point, lowering the freezing point, only depend on the number of solute particles. So the more ions that are there, the greater the change. Okay? All right. So, that, and boiling point elevation. All right, so uh, let's do a practice problem and then we'll do our lab here. And we'll be good to go. Yep. <laughs> All right, so. Um, we're found, we found that we have I have to make up some numbers here. <laughs> One and a quarter. <laughs> Girls, can you stop talking? Thank you. Trying to uh, come up with some numbers in my head, and all I hear is you guys talking. Yeah. I, yeah. Okay. So five over. Three. I do All right, so we have uh, molality. We have five moles of sugar dissolved in four liters of water. If I give you grams of sugar, which you that's what you'll have, um, it's just easier for me to come up with this number if I use moles right now, then you would go grams to moles before you can find out what molality is here. So we got to find M here before we can start. Uh, so molality is going to be the moles of the solute, which is the thing that gets dissolved, means like the solute you pour into the liquid. And then divided by kilograms of the solvent, which is going to be the water. So the density of water equals one gram per milliliter. If I were to multiply this by a thousand, it would be one kilogram per one. 
leader. Yeah. Okay. So we want to calculate. The change in boiling point of water when we did all this. What's the normal boiling point of water? Is it like 112? What's that? 100. 100 degrees Celsius. Celsius. Yep. Okay. So this is going to be our baseline. When we find the final boiling point, we're going to take our answer here and add it to this. That's when we'll raise it by that. So instead of calculate the change, I'll just say calculate the boiling point. Okay. So, uh, if we, we have sugar, sugar is made out of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So when it dissolves, is it going to form ions? Nope. nope. So what would its von Hoff factor be? One. Yep. So we have one there. KB is always 0 0.52. And now we have to find the molality. So... I'm going to take five moles of the sugar that we added. How many kilograms of water do we have? Oh, four. Four, yep. So five divided by four will give us 1.25. Okay? Wait, how did you figure out that iron one? Sugar is, when it dissolves in water, because it's made out of all non-metals, it's a non-electrolyte, so it doesn't form ions. Oh. Okay, and now we can just put in our numbers here. So we get uh, 1 times 0 0.52 times 1.25. Is it 0 0.512 or 0.52? Oh, 0.512, yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we get zero point six four degrees Celsius equals the change in the boiling point temperature. So then the actual boiling point or the new boiling point is what? Yep. New boiling point is going to be 100.64 degrees. Okay, so when we do freezing point depression, it works the same exact way, except we'll just have a different uh, constant here. It'll be for freezing. I think it's 1.18, but we'll cross that bridge tomorrow when we do it. Okay? We'll cross that bridge later. Okay, so easy, or makes sense. We have an example to go from. All right, so now let's look at the lab and get you going on that so we can finish up the thing we need today. Wait, so we're just supposed to raise the boiling point, not lower it? Adding salt to, adding any, dissolving anything in water will raise the boiling point. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yep. You think there's more stuff to, like, that has to be heated up, right? Yeah, I was confused because I thought we were calculating, like, lowering the boiling point. Uh, we will lower the freezing point. No. We're doing this wrong. Yes. The freezing point depression, boiling point elevation. So when you add stuff to more energy to cause the boil. We'll, let's talk about it after uh, I go through the instructions here. All right. So um, essentially what you're doing is you're going to first get a standardization for your thermometer. So what that means is you're going to just take clean water on a hot plate and you're going to boil it. And you want to see what your thermometer actually reads. Some thermometers will read 98 or 
Okay, and that will be your boiling point. They're not all perfect. Okay, they're kind of these. These ones are kind of, you know, they there might be something wrong with the thermometer, and it's going to read a different temperature than what is true. Okay, it may read 101, but it, that's just an error from the thermometer. So first thing is you're going to find the boiling point of your water by, and you're going to standard get the um, standardization for your thermometer by finding what is the boiling normal boiling point. Oh, come on. Go, baby, go. Maybe we should ask it nice a bit. Please move. Please move on. 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 Please for your specific thermometer. <laughs> so, oops, follow on, please. All right, so measure out 100 milliliters of water. You're going to heat that up, put it in a 250 milliliter beaker, bring it to a gentle boil, record that temperature. That's your normal boiling point. Okay. Now you can add. Um, add your solute. So you're going to be doing two different um, substances here. You're going to do 10 grams of sodium chloride, which has a different von Hoff factor than sugar, right? Because it, uh, it turns into ions when it dissolves. And uh, it's going to have a different molality because you're going to have a different number of moles of the sodium chloride compared to the sugar. Okay? And so uh, you're going to then add whatever 10 grams of sugar or salt. Greg? Yeah. Eyes up here. No talking, right? Get your eyes on. I'll be done in a little bit, and you guys can do the lab and socialize. But you're, it's, uh, it, sometimes I just have a hard time focusing when I just hear you guys' conversations. OK? Thank you. Courtesy and respect. All right, add 10 grams of sugar to 100 milliliters boiling water. Okay, allow it to dissolve. Observe the change, okay? Record the new boiling point. Clean your glassware, rinse it out. Repeat four 10 grams of salt, okay? Or you can do them in either order. And then uh, record the new boiling point. What you're going to do, so if you guys flip to the data table on the next page, is uh, while this is boiling, you can calculate what the expected change in temperature should be for each of the uh, experiments. And then compare that to what you actually got, all right? And what you're going to do is then calculate the percent error by taking your calculated temperature change minus what you measured as your temperature change and divide all that by your calculations times 100, okay? So you should be doing those calculations while you are, um, while you're waiting. For the water boil. Okay. Um, pre lab questions. Don't worry about those. You can do those as post lab questions. Um, I kind of want you guys just to get started here. All right. So, so plan today, get, get all your data collected. And everything cleaned up and put away. So don't leave anything out for the next lab. Uh, towards the end, we got to um, get to a point where we just got to get this room tidy through 
through the end of the school year. So are these class um, copies? No, nope, this is your copy. Yep. So these are all for you to keep and they can turn it. Yep. <laughs> Can I use the bathroom? Yep. Thank you. Can I go with them? Please.